Hello, and welcome to something very different from Mario Superstar Baseball for the Nintendo GameCube. This is Dragon Warrior Monsters 2 Kobe's Journey, the very first speed game that I tried to pick up. I say tried because I did the 100% category for this game, which you can see below, Glitchless Max cat Catalog, the link cable. I did one attempt, I spent 12 and a half hours, and I did not even reach the halfway point. And this was after spending months routing this game and trying to understand it on a, on a machine code level. I don't like leaving jobs unfinished though, so in these videos, I will spend an hour at a time speed walking through the game. Why do I say speed walk? Uh, this isn't gonna be anything even close to a submittable speed run, not even a segmented speed run. It's just going to be me trying to play fast, testing strategies for playing fast, seeing what I need to do, and if there's anything that I missed, and I will have a time, it will be a baseline time from which I can base everything else. I will get all 310 monsters. I will not stop until I do. I'm not going to start over either. I'm going to keep going until I get all 310, no matter how long it takes. And from there, I should be able to keep refining things until it becomes an actual speedrun that could actually be done in one or two or three segments, whatever it would be reasonable to do, uh, if there need to be uh, bathroom and sleep breaks and stuff like that. So that's the goal. Now we need a very serious name for our very serious journey. Okay. In the any percent categories, time begins when you say yes to this prompt and confirm your name. So I'm going to follow that convention myself and start time in three, two, one. So the first six and a half minutes of the speed run are boring. Nothing happens, it's all the same. Uh, during that time, I will talk about uh, the story of the game uh, and then also uh, how the game works in general. We are going to Great Log. Great Log is an island. It's pretty great because it is a log. Specifically, it is a log that floats. Um, floating is good because if it didn't, a uh, Great Log would sink into the ocean, and that's bad. So we're just about to arrive there on our ship. Uh, then we will need to pick up a nut pie. We will encounter some hooligans who steal the nut pie. Um, and there will be consequences that we will have to deal with. I don't want to spoil it, but just keep in mind that Great Log is supposed to float. Now for the speed run. This game is very similar to Pokemon. You're going to hear me making a lot of uh, references to Pokemon because there just happens to be a lot of things that it has in common. Um, there is an in-game library, which you could say is equivalent to the Pokedex. It lists every monster you've ever had at one point. Um, there are 310, 310 monsters, uh, which is a lot more than Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow had at the time, so props to uh, Enix for sh shattering that number record. Um, there are two ways to get monsters. You can recruit them, which you get by feeding them meat in battle and then defeating them, and you can breed them. And breeding is basically combining monsters. You take two monsters and make them into one monster. Um, these two on screen are Kameha in yellow and Waribu in purple. Uh, they're jerks, but they're important to the story, so we will put up with them for now. Um, yeah, because breeding takes two monsters and reduces them to one, you're going to need to do a lot of recruiting in order to do the breeding. There are many monsters that you can only get through breeding, and many monsters who it's just too slow to try and find them without breeding. So you breed them anyway, because it's faster. Uh, oh, here's our nut pie that we need to take back home. Good thing nothing bad is going to happen with the nut pie, or anything else. <sighs> now, the run has three parts. Uh, the first part is we need to go through the story mode and collect a bunch of stuff and a good team of monsters uh, to make everything fast and possible later. Second, we go through some of the bonus worlds, we figure out what those bonus worlds have, we figure out if those bonus worlds have what we need, we might need to get some more bonus worlds, 
and after we've fully mapped out everything and figured out what we have, we go to the third phase, which is just catching monsters, breeding them, getting them up to level 10 so that they can breed again, and repeat. It's pretty complicated, but I have charts and maps for... Oh, ouch. By the way, that was the plug that keeps a uh, great log floating. It just got broken, so now we need to fix that. Uh, we're gonna have to go to other worlds, and we're gonna have to find treasures that can be a plug. That's the idea. Yeah, mass manufacturing uh, monsters. Uh, it's it's gonna be a complicated process, but I'm going to do my best to make it as clear and well explained as I can. Um, thankfully, even though I am very rusty at this game and uh, don't have many of my notes as, as clear in my head as I used to, uh, I will be able to figure it out and I will be able to explain it because I've researched this game a lot, and I do mean a lot. Months of effort. Months of effort making the spreadsheet alone. And the tracker, by the way. I made that. That's fine. Um, and I did it in Google Sheets. Um, so if I make some mistakes here and there, understand that that's because uh, I've been working on lots of other stuff, not including, uh, up, definitely including Mario Superstar Baseball, but other stuff too. Um, yeah. So, what is the next most important thing to cover? Um, I'll explain the tracker a little bit more. Um, you can see that the tracker is sorted into different columns. Uh, hold on. need to get this key. Ah! So much text. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The families of monsters are kind of like types in Pokemon, but it's not as important for, like, actual gameplay. Um, there are only a couple of different types of skills that are super effective against a particular family. Um... More so, it indicates like what kind of properties the monster has: its, its stat growths, its resistances, um, its abilities. Although there's a lot of variation within the families, it's like a rough suggestion. But family is important because it is a crucial factor for breeding monsters. Um, I'm probably not going to talk about breeding in this video uh, because I do not expect to make it out of Pirate World. Uh, in under an hour. <laughs> it would be great if I did, but I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to. Um, yeah. And so the vertical columns in the tracker correspond to the different families, and uh, the horizontal positions correspond to the spot in the uh, library. They're in order. So you can see my very first monster, Slime. Uh, his name is Slash. This is one that the game names for you. Um, is already filled in. And he's like not, not he's not the first one on the slime page. He's like on the second page. So that's why he's a little ways down. Um, and then, yeah, blank spaces at the bottom. And you can see at the very bottom is the number of each family that I still need in order to have one of everything. So that's the tracker. Next, the game. So there's Overworld, there's random encounters. Uh, these fights are like this, it's three on three, um, up to three on three. Um, that's the idea. Uh, there's regular attacks, magic spells, status moves, healing, all kinds of stuff. And you have items, you have your own turn as the trainer. Uh, instead of taking up one of your monster's turns, you can do things on your turn. So that's important to know also. Uh, what else? Oh, there's also a tactics system. So you can give your monsters specific instructions most of the time, but in some situations you either have to or might want to give them more general direction, which lets their AI decide what to do. And there is a stat in this game, Intelligence, which makes the AI smarter, up to a certain point. It's not foolproof. 
Um, but it is important. Okay. Need some jerky. Three should be enough. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you'll see me using the tactics system and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. First task. That was the Circus Master. So, here is why we are here. We are in Desert World. We are looking for the Tidal Bell. The King has the Tidal Bell. The King's Tidal Bell is in the Treasury. We can't get into the castle yet. We need to first get into the castle to talk to the King in the first place. That means we need an inn. What is our inn? Like in the direction, not an inn. There is an inn to stay in. I mean, we need a, we need a way in. We are going to become circus performers. That's right, we are running away from home to join the circus. Um, so that was great, except we don't need that monster yet. But I'm going to mark it on the tracker because it decided to join us for free. Anyway. Uh, now, in order to be a circus performer, and everybody knows this, you need to have three monsters. If you have only one or two monsters, you're not a real circus performer. Get out of here, kid. Come back when you have three monsters. Um, so that's what we're going to do first. And in any percent speed run, you'd basically just take whatever you could get. You want some specific things. Uh, and that's that. But because I'm doing Max Catalog, I want very different things. Different specific things. Specifically, I'm looking for a Crest Pet. Just like that one. And I'm going to try and feed it two beef jerkies hopefully will be enough. Here you can see I'm feeding it meat during the battle. And once it is defeated, like so, it has a chance of joining my party. There we go. And this one I actually do want to keep with me. It's level four. That's decent. Okay. Um... When, you, you, uh, when you're in a random encounter, a wild encounter, the monster that can join your team is always the last monster that you defeat. So you need to be careful to defeat monsters in a certain order so that you don't end up potentially recruiting the wrong one. The wrong one. Um, that's not going to matter right now. It is going to matter very soon. Also, is this Asiya? Yes, it is. Okay. Our third monster is down here in the well. We've spent a significant amount of our time in wells in the game so far, and it is no different right now. We need to be in the well. Because we're looking for a spoopy ghost. I'm spooked right out of my chair. I'm not getting out of my chair. Uh, we want this guy. He will be useful to us for later. What do you say? Yeah, there we go. Great. We've got three monsters. Oh, level one. Ooh, bad luck. Well, we'll make it work, I guess. I'm trying to think. I, th I think I have to grind for levels since I'm only level one. Like, that's that's really bad. Uh, uh, what were they saying? I have a specific route for monsters that I want to get while playing through story mode that will eventually end up in three very strong, very useful monsters. These monsters will have good stats, good skills. Uh, in particular, they will have utility skills that do things outside of battle. Uh, that's very important. Um, and they'll just overall be ready to deal with any of the content that this game has to offer. Um, uh, so this crest pent that I'm getting right now is going to become... Oh wait, hold on, I have to say yes to him. The crest pent eventually becomes a King Leo, which is basically just a big lion. Whereas the spooky will eventually become a gold golem which is a statue, as you might expect. 
Also, real quick note about the story. Uh, we got to see the king. The king says, I will give you the treasure if you give me a problem to solve so that I can prove my worth to the people. We found the problem to solve, which is that the well was dry by talking to that lady. Now we're going back to the king. And the king is trying to get someone to fix the problem, but no one will listen to him. So the king has decided to take matters into his own hands, and we have to stop him slash help him, that reckless guy. We'll do some encounters along the way to uh, the other town. Desert only has two towns. Uh, this is a very shitty world. I very much dislike it. The monsters are weak and don't give a lot of experience. It's a very annoying thing to have to do at the beginning of the run, but we will thankfully only have to come here, hopefully, three times. This being the first one. Um, yeah. Now, you might not necessarily have a good sense of what a King Leo or Gold Golem is right now, but just you wait. You will by the time I'm done with this entire process. Also, it'd be really great if my spooky could level up. Level one is just not good enough. Ooh. I guess I just have to proceed anyway. This is taking too much time. I'm gonna take the end though. Inns always cost 10 gold, they're great. So, on our way to fix the well. Oh, there's the king. The king does violence to his own people, no doubt improving his image. Uh, like I said, we've gotta, we've gotta go stop slash help him. This is a good encounter to get. Any in any encounter with just one monster in it is really nice to get. Because you can often take care of it in one turn, exactly like I did there. Let's see. I did not mark spooky. There we go. Now it's spooky. Spooky is the first zombie uh, monster listed. Boss fight. We're just gonna hit this beaver a lot. That's it. And so this is an example of me having my own turn. I can heal my monsters, whichever one got hit, and they can keep fighting. So healing items are very important. Other items are important too. Healing items are especially important. I think this thing has 90 HP, but I don't count HP. I'm not an any percent runner and it's dead. Defeated, whatever. These levels are good, even though they take a little bit. <laughs> okay, so why was the beaver here? Uh, he was kicked out of his home by bandits. Bandits? Oh no. Those sound like a lot of trouble. Well, poor beaver. We don't care about its suffering, though. Uh, it has to deal with the bandits itself. It's just not allowed to, like, ruin this well. Uh, because it feels driven out of its own home that's just not allowed. Um, yep. Let's just go to the treasury and get our plug and then leave. Honestly. I really dislike desert and I'm glad that it's about to be over in a single minute. Because uh, then we get to go on to a world that's actually interesting. The pirate world. Um, and after we get through the pirate world then we'll actually be able to start breeding which is where the speedrun starts getting very interesting. All right, King, pay up. We helped you. Title bell. Give title bell, please. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Oh, what? Stolen? By bandits? Bandits kicked the beaver out of its home. Bandits stole our treasure. It's the same bandits. So now we need to go beat the bandits. Now what we could do is we could go to where we know their hideout is, try and attack them, and then have them disappear in a mirage. We do not have to do that. Who long do I have? Yeah, good. Or we could talk to this prisoner, which and this prisoner will give us a good item that allows us to actually attack the bandits. Uh, but he's available right away, so there's no reason to go there and come back. We're just gonna, we're speedrunners. We're just gonna kind of move things along. I'm not gonna try and like hide the ball here. We're gonna go kick those bandits' uh, bandits ass. This is, you get the point. And that means we're going to heal and we're going to save because Max Catalog is a marathon and not a sprint. Now, a little bit more about Desert World before we leave here, and then I would say hopefully never come back. We are going to have to come back at least once, but probably twice. Um, there are not very many monsters here. You've, you've already seen most of them. Um, the ones that you haven't seen are King Cobra... And I think that's it? Oh, and Animon, but we can't fight Animon yet. So don't worry about that one. Um, two Crest Pence. I'll take it. They're not actually that strong. Wow, they were, they were, they were a lot weaker than I thought. Okay, good. More items on the map. Love it. Um, yeah, monsters are weak. There's not very many of them. Uh, this is a bad place to grind for experience, even though the game literally tells you to grind for experience here. There's the item the prisoner gave us, and wouldn't you know it, there are the bandits. Let's go. Here's a bandit. Oh, but this guy's actually not a bandit. He was sent by the... Lord of Limbo. Interesting. I wonder why he's telling us this. Could be that it will come up later. This is Cursed Lamp. It's a lamp. What do you want? Um, get it because it's a desert world. It's like lamps and genies and the Middle East. I don't know. We're just going to hit it until it dies. There's no there's no greater strategy here. Hit it till it dies. Heal when people are low. There. Crestpent is low on health. Now it's not. You get the picture. The combat gets a lot more interesting soon. I feel a little bit bad because in this first video I basically have to be like, okay, so the first part of this game is shitty and really boring, but I promise it gets more complicated and interesting soon. I promise. It's like... It really does, though. It really does. I'm not joking. I just have to hit the A button a whole bunch of times, and then I'll be able to start talking about some cool stuff. Let's see. What I will talk about now is the process of making my spreadsheet and tracker. Also, this guy join you, joins you for free. You never have to give him meat. He joins you automatically. Goodbye, Slash. We will never see you again. Um... There's a lot of information about this game, breeding tables, stats and resistances charts, um, lists of where monsters can be found. Everything related to bonus worlds is complicated and required a lot of my own personal research past what other people have done. Um, and the route itself, the story world route at least, I have gone through many different iterations of it and I am running the most recent iteration and the one that I did for my 12 and a half hour attempt. But, uh... 
probably there will be some refinements before the actual attempt, assuming that there is an actual attempt, which I think there will be eventually. So, there's the title bell. It worked. It didn't work. Fuck. Uh, okay, so our island is still sinking, and we're going to need to get a different plug. Thankfully, though, Waribu was able to harvest uh, some of the latent magic in the shitty plug that didn't work, and now we can use HM03 Surf. I think it's 03. 2 is Fly, 4 is Strength, 5 is Flash, 1 is Cut. Yeah, HM03 Surf. Um, so it's pretty cool. And we're going back to Oasis for two things. One, treasure, and third is a free... Or, third. First is treasure, second is a free monster. There is no third. We do not want to be here any longer. We will leave. Um, just keeping track of all this information at once is just kind of nuts. Um, I will eventually have a public version of my uh, spreadsheet open again. Um, it's kind of nuts. Everything about trying to do this particular category for this game is nuts. Um, so we just got an exit bell. That's like an escape rope. It takes you out of the dungeon that you're in. We then got a bookmark. A bookmark lets you save your game anywhere, not just in towns and safe places. Um, they're very useful. I love bookmarks. I highly recommend. That is a wind staff. It allows you to use your Kobe turn for attacking, not just healing. Uh, it sucks. Never ever do this. Never ever waste your uh, turn attacking. Also, I was wrong. The thing that we got earlier was the tiny metal. We got the exit bell now. I just got the items confused. The tiny metals can be exchanged for a master ball or rare monsters. It's called the meat e orb which works as a pun on multiple levels, so I like I love that. It guarantees a recruit if the monster is recruitable. Agility ring. That makes a monster faster. It's a held item. There are held items in this game. You can only hold one at a time. Uh, most of them are not very good, but in the run, we are going to get three that are decent. Actually, one of them is very good. The other two are solid. Not overwhelmingly good, but solid. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it further, there's another three items that are very useful for different reasons, but I'll explain that when I get there. Last item that we got is a warp wing. If we are outside a dungeon, a warp wing takes us back to Great Log, and we are going to use that very soon. Actually, specifically, it's if you're on the overworld map, a warp wing will take you straight to, get to Great Log. So there you go. Um... Yes. Uh, what else? So those are the items. There's lots of different items in this game, as you might expect. Uh, we just looted that place thoroughly for treasure. Uh, and now we are going to go pick up our free monster. So... I'm just looking at the spreadsheet again, and I'm just, I'm very proud of my work. Especially all the stuff that I did with bonus worlds. That was really charting new territory. And if anybody else ever decides to run this or do anything even vaguely close to it, I hope that they are able to benefit from my knowledge, because I will share it freely. Once it's ready. Um... Okay, so we are getting this beaver that we beat up earlier, um, but we don't want him on the team yet, uh, because he's okay. He's actually decent, but he doesn't need any more experience right now, and we need to be prioritizing monsters that we want experience for, because they are going to be uh, needed to breed, and that means they need to be at level 10. Also, there's something that I haven't marked. I didn't mark Crest Pent. Please excuse that. And now I need to mark Beavern. Beavern. There it is. 
All right, so we're done with desert. Hopefully we <laughs> only have to come there again to recruit like King Cobra or something. Don't want to worry about it. Um, so now we need, no, oh, Warubu tells us we need to get the pirate key. Then this uh, red clothed gentleman tells us the pirate key is in the arena. Go to the arena. We are going to go to the arena. We're going to fight in the arena and then we are going to get the pirate key. Makes sense, right? It does, it does make sense. Pretty convenient that the guy who tells you with an item that you need, uh, tells you that the item that you need is just over there and that you can go get it if you want to. Exactly when you need to do it, it's pretty convenient. This is the Kitty Cup. It is a preview of what the arena is actually like. It is also extremely boring. Uh, I'm just gonna be pressing the A button a bunch of times and maybe if I really, really, really need to, telling the Curse Lamp to use a defense up spell. That's what upper, upper is. Upper is not very descriptive. It raises a single monster's defense. That's what it does. Whew. By the way, none of the monsters that you have access to at this point in the game have natural healing spells. So the only healing that you can do is from your inventory. And in the arena, you're not allowed to use your inventory. Trainers do not get their own turns in the arena, specifically. So let's watch this exciting action. Ugh. Swell. Oh no. My dragon died. My dragon snake. It's a snake, but it's dragon family. <sighs> now, put something in your brain for later. We're in the arena, and we're pressing the A button a whole lot of times. Keep those two things in your head. In the arena, pressing A button a whole lot of times. It will come up again later. Also, our ghost is about to die, uh, redundantly, but rip. Uh, there, there it is. So we are going to have our lamp take some uppers. And now it is harder to hit and deal damage to. One more for safety. And now fight. Mixed is kind of a difficult strategy to explain. Mixed, what mixed really means is use status inducing moves or stat affecting moves. Um, make your enemies confused, the panic spell, that's under mixed. Um, defense up, offense up, those are under mixed. Um, and there's like a couple of other weird and obscure things that are under mixed. Defense is for healing and guarding spells and techniques. Uh, and off, uh, charge is for everything offense related, including physical type attacks that are special, like martial arts, uh, and spells, offensive spells, which mostly makes sense. And also, uh, ordinarily you can give direct commands to do specific things. In the arena here, you cannot. So your command ability, which is for specific instructions, is replaced by this, no skill, which just means do your basic attack only. And then they will only do their basic attack. They actually do listen. Good. That was the only real threat, the Kite Hawk. Mad Ravens are complete pushovers. They only ever do one damage to the Curse Lamp. Only a little bit more of this to go. And there we go. We're finally past the arena where we have pressed the A button a bunch of times, don't forget. Which means. We got the pirate key. Now, that lady also said something else. What that lady said was, you can use the breeding services now. Oh, that's great. Let's go use the breeding services now. That sounds good to me. Oh, there's a horrendous line. Well, never mind then. Why did you tell me that I could then? Anyway, <sighs> let's go to the pirate world and have some fun there. or it's the Sea World, but I refuse to call it the Sea World, it's the Pirate World. Also, it's the Desert World, not the Oasis World. I'm being inconsistent on purpose, and I'm deciding to just call them whatever I think is cooler. 
and you're just gonna have to deal with that. Maybe you have an inner, inner pedant like me, uh, but you're just gonna need to tell them to be quiet because this is my show. <laughs> in here, bonus item. And now, sell this that we don't need. Sell this that we don't need. Oh, we want three more bookmarks. Three more pork chops. Your inventory limit. You see QTY, quantity, in the upper right? That's your inventory space. Your maximum is 24. So I'm going to mostly fill up my inventory, but I want to leave a little bit of room so that if I see any goodies on the overworld map, I can pick them up. Ooh, like that. Herb. Herbs are very important in the early game. So, I want to recruit that bat. Oh, I pressed the wrong thing. Well, because I want to recruit the bat, I'm going to defeat the ant and the ant bear. It's like an anteater, taper, something. Looks vaguely like a hedgehog also. Tough to say what it is. It's a monster. But I need to defeat the other things first, is the point. This is also very useful because it will be good, good for some solid experience. Alright, Bat. It's very important that you join me, and it's also very important that you be of the Mars sign, not the Venus sign. needs to be the Venus sign, because this crest pet is also the Venus sign. They need to have opposite signs in order to breed. Or you could say that they're male or female, which is, I think, the terms that the game use. I prefer to call them uh, those because it's more fun. I need both of these at some point, so I'm just going to use the meat right away, and then whoever dies second dies second, and I'll be happy no matter what. But I need to heal. I need to heal my ghost. Hmm. That gopher hits hard. Hmm. Maybe I'll be able to recruit it. What do we got? Yes. Okay. Marking that. Uh... What else? Mad Gopher is eventually going to. Oh wait, the first one. The first one. It doesn't matter. Um. Wait, maybe it does. Ah, uh, it, it doesn't matter for now. I know the circumstances in which it matters. And sorry, this is a little complicated. Uh, eh. Yeah, I'm going to send the ghost home. The ghost is just not pulling its weight. It's very weak. Um, and it's at level eight. It's gonna need to be at level 10. Um, monsters that are not in your current party do get a little, a little bitty bit of experience while they are playing around on the farm. It's not a lot, but it's something. So when we go back, it might be level 9. Probably won't be level 10, but it'll be a pretty speedy process to get it up to level 10 if it is not. Ooh, what's this? Pork chop, solid. Refill. What's this? Friend staff. Now that's a nice item to see in the early game. Um, you can manipulate... Um, based on the frame that you enter the game on. Uh, overworld items. That is an item that the any percent speedrun manipulates uh, because it is extremely powerful. It 
Okay, fancy pants. Um, it doubles the attack power of the monster uh, that it uh, that you cast him on. Double attack power is really good. Especially in a speedrun where your strategy for winning is kill them first. Not don't die, kill them first. And there's a very large difference. Okay. No, 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 not yet, not yet. Okay, good, it's still alive. Uh... Now, are you a Martian, Draki? Please? For whatever reason, I only seem to get Venusian Drakis, and it's a little irksome, but I'm a big gal, I can deal with it. So, even though we're not getting exactly what we want, we are still getting some useful experience, and experience is important because we have a very important and very difficult boss fight up very soon. <laughs> so what that was an example of is attacking an enemy that had already been, oh, already been defeated, uh, which can happen. And sometimes that's a bad thing, but often it's a good thing, especially when you want a specific monster to die. For instance, it was good that it didn't attack another target because it might have killed the Draki before the Eggplaton. That's what ended up happening anyway, but that was because my monsters were disloyal, not because I was stupid. See, they're ignoring my orders. That means they're basically just going to do whatever they want. They can guard, they can choose different targets, they can use skills, even if you told them to not use skills. Uh, if you like the Eggplaton so much, keep attacking it. Um, yeah. So, oh, shoot, I forgot to use the meat. Well, maybe it'll join us anyway. Nope. Okay. We're going to keep rolling around. More experience never hurt anybody. These monsters are extremely weak, so I will take the experience points and move on. This boss fight that is coming up is actually very hard, and I would like to just be able to walk away from it um, when I can. Incidentally. Um, interesting fun fact, this boss that I'm going to fight is actually optional. That is too bad. Uh, that is too strong. Those are too strong of opponents for me. I need to leave. Preferably before my snake dies. Rip. So now we have a little coffin. But don't worry, even though that monster died, it is only temporary, you see. You just have to walk to the local clergy person. They will charge a fee based on the level of the monster that needs to be revived. Uh, and then you get them back. It doesn't use the euphemism of fainting like Pokemon does. That monster just fucking died. And then got brought back to life. Easy. Now, if only real-life priests could do that, am I right, folks? Alright. Draki, please. Martian Draki, please. Sagittarius Draki, please. Don't do that.
Oh my god. This fucking gopher is the thorn in my side. It is just being disobedient as hell. <laughs> okay. Ant bear. There it is. Now, the question is, is that ant bear useful to us? The answer is, not yet. Maybe it will be eventually. Ooh, beef jerky. We've basically outgrown beef jerkies at that point. What we want are ribs. Ribs are more powerful than pork chops. Pork chops are intermediate. Oh boy, e, the mole is ignoring orders again. I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, it actually picked the correct target anyway. Well, all right then. I might use that beef jerky on something, but probably I won't. All right, let's see. Yes! Um, so first of all, let me mark that. It is a bird type. Which makes sense, it can fly. Uh, and... Hold on. I can check its stats before releasing it. Yeah, this thing is way too weak. It needs to go back to the farm. It is not going to be fighting the boss uh, that we want to fight. Am I ready to do the boss fight? Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, money. I love money. Uh, hmm. I want to see if I can get the mole. It's a good use of my time. It's worth a pork chop. And if I have another turn, I'll give it the beef, beef jerky also. Yeah, there we go. You can have that. What do you say? Hey, there we go. Did I already get one of those? Oh, I did. And there were both Venusian. Right? Yep. Both of them are female, uh, which means I need to get a specific monster in the future. Martian. This is fine for now. The one other monster that I need from this area is an army ant. I don't currently have any meat, so I will go back for a little bit of meat. Yeah, this sells for a lot, but it's much more valuable than that. That looks good. Safety save. Yeah, there are two different ways to do the next section of the story. Number one is that you can fight this boss after which it will offer to join your team every single time. It's a guaranteed recruit, just like the curse lamp. The other thing is I can go onto the water right now and recruit a specific monster with a specific ability. It is a very good monster. Uh, it's possible that in the future I will do that instead of this. Although the monster that you get from the boss fight is also good, just for different reasons. The boss is good for offense. The alternate monster is good because it has innate healing abilities. So interesting how that's how it works out but 
I'm used to working with the boss, so I will take the boss. We haven't met them yet, so I'm not going to spoil their names. <laughs> We're going to go, though. It's time. Saving in Paluna. Oh, right. The story. So, we don't know how to get our plug yet, but I know, and the answer is, we need to show an old man a fish. That means we need to get a fish. So, we're going to go do that. I'm being a little bit flip. Um, there's an NPC in a town that we haven't been to yet who will only talk to you if you have a water-type monster in the party. Something about this game is, unlike Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, there is the Water Family. You can see the Water Family, second from the right, little water drop. Aw oh, man, I wanted that. I wanted that ant. <sighs> These stupid disobedient monsters. Always making a fool out of me. Pork chop, not bad. So the boss is over this way. There's other good stuff in this area, but we'll get it after we've dealt with the boss. better this way. There's the boss. All right. You can't save here unless you use a bookmark. How are we doing? Good enough. This is Hood Squid. Ouch. That was a big hit. If only there was a way to uh, make it so that uh, we took less damage. Well, ooh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna do a trick. Watch this trick. I'll, I'll do it extra slow so that you understand what it is. Um, this is called, uh, What's it called? It doesn't have a name. I'm trying to come up with a name right now on the spot. This is called... Um, Tricky Tactics Glitch. Exploit. Whatever. So, here's how it works. When you press plan, it takes you through the different monsters. One. Two. And when you hit A to confirm what you want the third monster to do... It takes your turn away from you and does what you say. Or it does uh, what you told it to do. But, let's look, charge, charge. Now, what if instead I did mixed, mixed? It remembers? Aha! Uh -huh. As it turns out, you can change the tactics of your first two monsters and then back out of the tactics screen and do something else with your turn. Uh, which is useful if you want to say put your curse lamp on mixed so that it will use increase and put your bowl on defense because it is about to die but then still heal your bowl so that it does not die that's the tactics trick I'm going to call it the tactics trick that's pretty good Man, that gopher just cannot defend itself. Keep going, Lampy. Don't do speed up, though. Speed up sucks. It doesn't have any spells. I need to remember that Crestpent has stop spell. It's actually pretty good. Um, keep fighting. The good news at this point is that the Curse Lamp's defense is so high that it would be extremely unlikely for me to lose this fight. It's just going to be faster or slower and more fruitful for experience depending on what happens with the other two. So I'm going to try and keep them alive because I would like them all to get to level 10. Probably will not knock out the... Yep. Whenever the squid attacks the lamp, it just does no damage because its defense is too high. 
At least with by attack. That only did six damage. That's nothing. <sighs> Oof. Close to death. We're gonna herb that problem away. Just like we herb all of our pro uh, problems away, am I right, folks? We're going through a lot of herbs, but that's okay. Herbs level off very quickly. They will not be useful once we are done with Pirate. I am more than okay with using a lot of them now. Totally fine. Mmm, just took out my snake in one hit. Oof. Don't like that. That thing really needs experience. It's very tough to grind. It has a, lot, a high experience requirement. Its growth curve is very slow. So that's not good. Um... Die already. There we go. Really sad about the crest pet. Maybe I should have had it just guarding itself. Ah. Oh, that is not what I wanted to pick. I thought it would let me check the stats. I forgot that this is actually where it will not let you check the stats. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back because I want the treasure, but I need to I need to scuttle. I need to get out of here. Not safe. Monsters in there are a lot stronger than the overworld. Oh, here we go. Let's knock out another problem. Guys, listen, please. Okay, they listened this time. Cool. Means I actually have a chance of recruiting the ant. Yeah, there we go. What was I up to? Uh, I did H, right? So I... No, it's going back to the front. We need that ant for something, but it is not fighting. And that is all I will say about that. All I will say about that at this moment. Ooh, money. 100 gold, nice. No. I would prefer not to. There we go. We're out of here. Let's make our way to Polona, where we, will, where we will end this segment of the journey. A thought just occurred to me, which is, I'm not ending it, Polona. I need to go get Squiz back. Uh, so I just wasted a little bit of money, but it's okay. I have a warp wing or something, right? Warp staff. It's okay. That's pretty good. Yep. So, this has been a good hour. We've got a lot of monsters that we need. Um, that is most of the recruitments that we need to do in Pirate taken care of already. Uh, there are a few more, but we don't have access to the map screen that they're on yet. So, and I'll go ahead and put... Uh, I don't need the gopher on the team if it's already level 10, so... Squiz, get on here. And this will be our team for now. We're going to go see the old man. But that is in the next episode. Thank you for joining me on my journey to get every single one of these goddamn monsters. And I will see you for the next one. Oh, pause the timer.